والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely our praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, sustainer and controller of the universe and all within and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have come to the point in Ramadan where all that remains now are the last 10 days of this month. And these 10 days, in particular, the nights are special times. The Prophet والسلام, in a hadith in Sahih Muslim. He told us that if a person finds that at the beginning of Ramadan they are not so into doing extra worship, then that state of not really laziness but you know something similar should not continue in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So in a way we're kind of excused if you like to being a bit lazy in the first part of Ramadan but highly recommended and encouraged that once the last part of Ramadan comes, the last 10 days, that we should not be lazy anymore in terms of doing extra ibad. <coughs> now, all of this, I mean, the Prophet ﷺ was someone who constantly <coughs> worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, when the last 10 days of Ramadan began, you could see a difference in his own attitude and behavior. Aisha radiallahu anha in the famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari tells us that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana idha dakhal al-ashru al-awakhir when the last 10 days of Ramadan came he would shadda mi'zar he would tighten his belt wa ahya layla and he would make his night come alive this is a literal translation what it means is he would make his night come alive by waking up and praying. And he would also wake up his family. So from this hadith, we see clearly that the Prophet ﷺ, despite how much he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you could still see that he worked harder in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And all of this, brothers and sisters, is due to one thing only, and that is Laylatul Qadr or searching for Laylatul Qadr. So I would like to talk a little bit about Laylatul Qadr. But since today is the 19th day of fasting, so the last 10 nights begin from tomorrow night, although some places will start tonight, because they are afraid if they get 29 days, you will only get 9 nights. But even if you did get 9 nights in the last portion of Ramadan, you will still get the 5 odd nights. So, what I would like to do today is to talk about when exactly is Laylatul Qadr. Now, this is an issue that has been debated by the scholars over the years. One of the amazing things that I found doing some research is that Al Hafid ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, in his book Fatul Bari, in discussing these ahadith in Sahih al Bukhari about Laylatul Qadr and it's in its uh, identification which night it is he mentions 48 different views among the scholars as to which night is Laylatul Qadr this is the first thing that blew me away because I didn't think you could have so many different views on just one night how much can you differ as to which night is Laylatul Qadr 48 different views and this in itself is a testament to the level of freedom of expression that Islam has given people. Because many of these views, brothers and sisters, as soon as you read them, you don't have to be a scholar, by the way. You will know that they are not correct. For their views among the scholars that Laylatul Qadr is not even in Ramadan. It's out of Ramadan. Sometime in the year. And this is clearly not correct. Because Allah the Exalted tells us in the Quran 
And there are three verses I want to, to share with you together. It pinpoints when or which month is Laylatul Qadr. First of all, in Surah al dukhan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka. Surely reveal it in a blessed night. How blessed is this night? Allah explains this in Surah Al Qadr. In Surah Al Qadr, Allah says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil Qadr. Surely we reveal it in the night of Qadr, in the night of power. And then in the verse, in the third verse, Allah tells us, Laylatul Qadr khayru min alfi shah. This night is better than a thousand months. The virtues of Laylatul Qadr, I will talk about that. I just want to, to talk today because we're so close. So that if anyone wants to start uh, observing the last 10 nights, they don't miss any night. And then the third ayah is in Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan lil-nas. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed as guidance from mankind. When we put all these ayahs together, what becomes clear is that the Qur'an was revealed in Laylat al-Qadr and that Laylat al-Qadr is in Ramadan. So any opinion that states it is out of Ramadan is not correct. Yet amazingly, these views have been documented and recorded because this is the level of freedom of expression that Islam gives to people. So we know with surety that Laylatul Qadr is in, the la is in Ramadan. Then there are views among the scholars that pinpoint it as one of the nights before the last 10 days of Ramadan. Again, based on the authentic ahadith in, in the Sahihain, Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, we know that it is, the, it is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, not the first 20. Now, Imam al-Bukhari mentions a hadith in his Sahih that the Prophet salam, at the beginning, when Ramadan was made, a fasting was made compulsory, he did itikaf in the first 10 days of Ramadan. Then he told the companions after that, you know what? Laylatul Qadr is not in the first 10 days. Stay in the Atikah for the next 10 days, the middle 10 days. And after that, he told them, you know what? Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days. It's not in the first 20 days. So based on this hadith, we also learn that even the Prophet ﷺ observed it from the beginning of Ramadan until he was informed that it is actually in the last 10 days of Ramadan. So we know with surety and certainty that Laylatul Qadr is in one of the nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. What we also know with certainty is that it is in one of the odd nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So the 21st, the 23rd, the 25th, the 27th, or the 29th. Any one of these five could be Laylatul Qadr. Because the Prophet in the authentic hadith in Bukhari and Muslim tells us that we should seek it تَحَرَّوْ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ فِي الْوِتْرِ مِنْهَا And in some versions it says إِلْتَمِسُوا لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ فِي الْوِتْرِ مِنْهَا He said seek or search for Laylat al-Qadr in the last ten nights in the odd nights of them. So the, the closest brothers and sisters that anyone can come to pinpointing Laylat al-Qadr is that it is one of the odd nights in the last ten nights of Ramadan. You cannot pinpoint it any closer. Now I know that the view of the majority is that it is the 27th night of Ramadan. But there are also authentic hadith, and this is based actually on an authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, in which Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu anhu said he knows which night it is and that it is the 27th night. But there are also authentic ahadith in Sahih Muslim narrated by other companions Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and so on that it was on the 21st night or the 23rd night. So if anyone believes the one hadith that is the 27th night how do they deal with the other ahadith that been pointed as the 21st or the 23rd night? So when we look at all the ahadith together those that seem to pinpoint it to one specific night, the 27th or the 21st or the 23rd. And we look at the other authentic hadith that tell us that the night of Qadr is in one of the odd nights without pinpointing which one of the odd nights. What we realize 
is that the companions, Ubay ibn Ka'b and Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and other companions who have been pointed into a particular night, we understand from their ahadith that based on the signs that the Prophet ﷺ told them to look for, in that particular year, it was that night. Because Ibn Hajar mentions that the, the scholars are of the view that Laylatul Qadr is not always on the 25th night, let's say in Ramadan. One year it might be the 25th night, the other year it might be the 23rd night. It moves in the odd nights. And this is so that people will not become complacent. Now the reason I'm saying this, we have to understand it this way, is that it is impossible that a Sahabi, a companion, could have knowledge that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam does not have. That's not possible. And the Prophet ﷺ told us in the authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, in a number of them, he said he was informed of the night. He knew exactly which night it was Laylat al-Qadr. And he came out to inform the Sahaba. But he found two people quarreling. And so he was distracted, and he had to now spend some time to settle this matter. And in the process, he said, I was made to forget. I was made to forget. And then he said, so search for it in the odd nights and the last ten nights of Ramadan. In fact, in one of the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said the fact that he forgot the night, the exact night, he said, perhaps this is better for you. Ibn Hajar explained this saying, better in what way? Better in the sense that we now have to work harder or strive for it. See, when you know something exactly when it is, you just wait till that day or that time and you do it. But if you didn't know, and you really wanted it badly, then you have to look for it now, you have to search for it. There is more sincerity or dedication or commitment in having to search for something. Because if you really want it, you will search for it. It, 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 manif you know, it sort of indicates that sort of keen desire, sincere intention to achieve it. But if it's known exactly when it is, then a person may just go through the motions of that one night without really having true sincerity. So Allah the Exalted in His infinite knowledge and wisdom decided to, after having informed the Prophet of the precise night, took away the knowledge so that the Muslims could strive for it, could work harder for it. So as is, as is clear from these ahadith, the Prophet ﷺ was made to forget the exact night. And so it is impossible that any companion of the Prophet ﷺ, despite of how great they might be, it is not possible for them to have knowledge of something like this that the Messenger himself ﷺ did not have. And he encouraged the Sahaba to search for it in the odd nights without limiting themselves to one particular night. Uh, that is the time when Ubay ibn Kaab should have come and said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I know you forgot, but you know what? I know, I remember, it's the 27th night. But he didn't. In fact, in his hadith in Sahih Muslim, when he, when he, he actually made an oath that it is the 27th night, he was asked, Why do you say this? How could you say this with the certainty? He said, By the signs. So the Prophet salam, in some of the ahadith, the authentic ones, he told the Sahaba to look for certain signs. In the hadith that pinpointed as the 23rd and the 21st, the Prophet ﷺ told the Sahaba that on the morning after Laylat al-Qadr, he saw himself prostrating in mud and water. But remember, these are two authentic hadith pinpointing two different nights, 21st, 23rd. It turned out that during the night, rain fell. So for Salat al-Fajr, and the masjid leak, you know, the Prophet's masjid did not have any fancy ceiling or roof. It just had the leaves of the day palm. So it leaked, and when the Prophet ﷺ made sujood for Salat al-Fajr, because there was water there with the, with the earth, traces of mud could be, wet mud could be seen on his forehead after Salat, Salat al-Fajr. So from the sign, on those particular years, the companions pinpointed that it, would, it, it was this night. So all these ahadith, and there are four of them in the Sahih, that pinpoints the Laylatul Qadr as the 21st, 23rd, and 27th. These are the three nights that were pinpointed. The understanding of these hadith based on the other authentic ahadith 
is that in that particular year, in that one year it happened to be that night based on the sign, but not that it's that night for every single year. <coughs> because then, like I said, a companion would have had knowledge of something that the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, did not have, and that is not possible at all. Because he is the Messenger of Allah, he is the one who is conveying the message to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our knowledge comes from him. His sunnah and of course from the Quran that Allah revealed to us through him. So, I want us to be clear that Laylatul Qadr is one of the odd nights in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So at the very, very least, if a person wants to be sure that he or she has prayed in Laylatul Qadr and made dua, then they need to observe prayers, the Hajjud prayers, on the odd nights in these last 10 nights. So the 21st night, which is Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, the 23rd night, which is Friday night, Saturday morning, the 25th night, which is Monday night, Tuesday morning, and then the 27th it's Monday. is Monday, and then the 29th, night of Ramadan as well. So this is the narrowest anyone can uh, come down to, to pinpointing Lalat al-Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. I know it's going to be difficult. The night itself is very short. By the time you're done with Taraweeh, even if you pray eight and you go home, you don't have much time to start Qiyam. So if Qiyam begins at two, by the time you get home, you may have only about an hour or an hour and a half before you have to come back for Qiyam at the Masjid, if you choose to come to the Masjid. So you'll get perhaps zero sleep in the night time. So you'll have to try to sleep a little bit after Fajr and maybe in the afternoon when you come home from work. So it will be challenging, it will be tough that we're, we're, we're having to skip sleep at least on these five nights. But nevertheless, it is the willingness that we have to sacrifice and to strive and to work hard, you know, to give up some sleep and comfort for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in pursuit of the tremendous rewards that Allah has promised us. This really is the essence of what seeking Laylatul Qadr is all about. It's the striving, the willingness to sacrifice, the willingness to forego that sleep, the willingness to put up with some hardships. It's not going to be permanent, brothers and sisters. It's just five nights in the last ten nights. And even if we wake up every night in the last ten nights, ten nights only, and then it will end. And the virtues of Laylatul Qadr, we will have to wait for them till the next Ramadan. And who knows who will, who will be alive for the next Ramadan or who will be good in good health in the next Ramadan. So we have an opportunity, but it will require some sacrifice and some striving from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us, open our hearts and minds so we can understand this wonderful message he has revealed, and may he inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and give us the strength and the iman to observe Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us during the days when we have to go to work and do other things. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our du'as in these last 10 nights, our salah, our qiyam, our ruku, our sujood, and all our good deeds. And may He cause us to be among those whom He has blessed with the opportunity to achieve and attain the blessings of Laylat al-Qadr. May He cause us to be among those whom He would have set free in, the, in, in Ramadan from the hellfire. May He cause us all to be among those whose fasting He would have accepted in the month of Ramadan. May Allah cause us to be among those whom He would have showered His mercy upon in the month of Ramadan. May He cause us to be among those whom He would have forgiven in the month of Ramadan. And may He cause us to be among those with whom He is pleased in the month of Ramadan. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Of course, there are other issues to talk about Lalat al-Qadr, but inshallah, as in the coming days, we will do that. I just wanted to talk about this particular issue now, so that people can start observing Lalat al-Qadr within the proper time. جزاكم الله خيرا. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.